In this video, we're going to talk about the role the Silver Lake House plays in the medallion architecture, including what it's used for and whom it benefits. So let's jump right in. So you'll recognize this architecture diagram that I've got over here on my screen. And what we've implemented so far is on the left hand side. So we've got our two data sources. We're ingesting our price paid data and our ONS postcode directory via a shortcut. And these are just in files in our Bronze Lake house. So we've not got any tables in our Bronze Lake house, just the files. And then we, what the next stage is we want to do is, is process to silver. So that's going to be using a couple of notebooks, which I'll show in a, in the next video. Uh, but the output of those notebooks is populating the silver lake house. And in the silver lake house, we have two tables. We have price paid and we have postcode directory. So you'll notice that these directly align with our bronze uh, data sources. And this is quite common for this, for the silver zone. We don't want to be doing too much shaping of our data. The main thing is we want to standardize those raw entities uh, and put them in some sort of structured and queryable format. So if I shift back to the slides right now, so the principles of the silver layer is we want to identify our key entities. In our case, it was the postcode directory and the price paid entity. Uh, so this generally can mirrors the source data, like I just mentioned, but what we, other things we're doing in the silver zone, we're cleaning the data. Uh, so we're removing uh, kind of error values or replacing values, which represent null with actual null values. We're standardizing the data. So for example, the schema, we want to change the, the column names. We want to apply data types such that the same column from one data source is called the same column, the uh, same thing as the same column or the logically same column from a different data source. So that downstream, when we eventually project to gold, we are working from a known set of fields and tables that we can then pick and choose what we want from each data source and put into our gold projections. So we want some level of kind of standardization that we've applied to the data set so that we know it can be easy to work with downstream. We might also be enriching data. So for example, if we've got master data values that need to be incorporated across data sources and systems, we can then incorporate at the silver layer. So again, we're building the fidelity of our, of our raw data, but we're not doing too much shaping, reshaping of the data itself. So generally, if your data has come in a single denormalized big flat table, probably don't want to do too much, um, too much reshaping of that or modeling of that preemptively that can happen in the gold zone. In the silver zone, we just want to essentially make that uh, data set that we've got and in the input side as high fidelity as we can. So that will also include partitioning the data. So, or, and combining data sets. So if we do have the same, uh, the same entity that comes from two slightly different source systems but they are almost identical. We might want to combine those into it, into the same table, but what we'd still want to do is add a column or some sort of indicator of which rows came from which data source. So that can be achieved quite easily with partitioning in Delta tables and spark tables. But the output is we have this more structured and queryable format in a Delta table so that we can switch to our SQL endpoint and start querying it using T-SQL, for example, but it's just a much easier to consume table format. So that's the principles of the silver layer, but you might still be asking why, why, why are we doing this and, and who are we doing this for? Why, why can't we go straight to gold? Well, the reason is we want a version of the data that's stored at full fidelity in this standard standardized queryable form where we've not necessarily modified the granularity of the data. Uh, we've not shaped it anyway. All we've done is we've applied kind of a, a level of gold plating, uh, to our, uh, to our silver, uh, data sets so that they're much nicer to consume downstream. And it might be that no one ever needs direct access to the silver layer. Sometimes it's useful for ad hoc analysis, but oftentimes the main benefit, the main beneficiary of the silver layer is you as a data engineer. It's putting your, your source data sets into a structured, well-known standardized format that you can then build on for your goal projections 
the gold projections, which may change the granularity, it may do some aggregations and group buys and only se select a subset of columns. But the, the thing is all of the data that you might need is there in the silver zone, ready for, ready for when you need to, you potentially need to use it in the future. That's not to say you need to bring everything into your silver zone. There's always a compromise. Don't ingest um, much more data than you know you, you might need in the future. Just ingest what you can for now. And then with things like schema revolution in Delta Lake, you can evolve that over time if you do need to add more columns. So that's really who it's for and, and, and why we need, or it's, it's good practice to have the silver layer in our medallion architecture. So that's really it for this video. In the next video, we're going to take a quick look at the notebooks in Fabric and walk through processing bronze data into the silver zone using those notebooks. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you soon.